There comes a time in everyone's life to transform, to enter the wilderness and dissolve the paradigm so that we can create the space for a greater self to be birthed. There's many phases in life, right? There's many, many phases in life. And here's the thing, is we are made to transform. Cellular, like at a cellular level, our cells recycle themselves every seven to eight years, okay? Within man, there's a transcendental principle. There's a transcendental principle that, you know, we are meant to be reborn many times in this lifetime. But the thing is, is in our society, we have no relationship to death and we have no relationship to the sacred anymore. And because of this, there is no initiations. People tend to stay the same. They get caught in one pattern and then life seems to become shallower and shallower and shallower and less connected until the day they die and they realize they never really lived. My friends, we have to learn to honor and respect death, you know, within our life the whole way and to create a new relationship with the sacred. My friends, I'm Christian. This is Reality Files. This is going to be a real talk about initiation. And kind of like what I'm experiencing in my life right now and what I've experienced many times, you know, in the past like five years along this awakening journey. <sighs> right now in my life, I'm feeling, I have been for a while now, a little bit stagnant. Like the things that used to make me really excited are no longer that interesting. It's almost like I came to a completion in a phase of my life. I completed the karmic cycle that I needed to go through, right? And then you start looking around like, what's next? You know, like, where's my calling right now? Where should I move to? Maybe you're experiencing this in your life, you know? And when we're not feeling the sense of light and life in our life, like enjoyment, thriving, we start seeking and grasping for things. We, in fact, start reaching for the memory of a feeling. We start reaching for the memory of a state that was usually at the birth of that cycle or that phase, right? And we essentially are reaching for life, but trapping ourselves away from it. By reaching for life, by trying to grasp for life, for life, we never truly live. What we must do is learn to let go of the paradigm we've been experiencing and realize that it's time for a new beginning at every end, at every close, right? A new opportunity is being ushered to your doorstep. But in order to open to that, we need to create a new relationship to the mystery, a new relationship to the sacred, and a new relationship to death. We must learn how to die once more. He who cannot die cannot be reborn. He, can, he, he who cannot shed his skin, right, will die, will perish. And you were made to be reborn. So right now I'm feeling that in my life, right? And all of a sudden, you know, in the past like week or three, everything in my reality started reflecting to me, it's time to enter the wilderness. It's time to go into the wilderness again, you know? It's time to go spend time alone in a sacred and ceremonial way. I wrote in my journal just now. It's time to get raw with myself, to get real with myself, to meet myself as I never have before, to meet my heart and my psyche in the wilderness out there, the wilderness of my own psyche, you know? And when you can set a container for yourself, when you can set a ceremony for yourself, like, you know what? I'm going to dive into the depths. I'm going to show up into the wilderness with a humble heart, with honest eyes, with an undaunted spirit, an undaunted spirit, you know, and I'm going to commune with the truth of my being. I'm going to commune with the truth of nature. I'm going to surrender to the divine. I'm going to surrender to the sacred and see what there is to see. I'm going to feel the depths of my core. I'm going to sit in that fruitful darkness, right? Non-dual. I'm not going to resist feelings or like try to fix anything or try to judge anything. I'm just going to let spirit speak and I'm going to feel undaunted, open, right? There's a way of communion with nature like that. That's called sacred space, 
you know? It's an aspect of the magician archetype is creating that sacred container for yourself. And man, you know, at different points in my journey, I, I went and did that. Like when I dropped out of school, you know, I ha created some sacred space and like many, many times. And that is where the vision is born. That is where your heart throbs again, where it like throbs with life and grief and sorrow and joy and the highest ecstasies and the lowest lows. Like when your heart, when you think it dies, it slowly starts to come back to life with all the love and life of the universe. You know, <laughs> maybe some Trevor Hall can guide us through all these times, but my friends, 2020 is a very potent time. It's a super potent time. It's a time for initiation. Initiation into a greater level of depth, the next level of manhood or womanhood. It's time for initiation into your sacred mission, into your sacred life, to live beautifully, you know? And it's scary. You know what's really scary? To think of your potential. It's really scary to like contemplate like, holy shit, how could I actually be living right now? And to let yourself dream that, to let yourself imagine it. We don't want to because we don't like think it's possible or we doubt ourselves or we have fear about it, you know. But to recognize that we are living so far beneath our, our threshold, to recognize and accept like, damn, you know, I, it's constant turbulence in my relationship. I'm not where I want to be with these things. I'm hurting inside. I've got a lot of wounds, you know, and I'm lost. Can we get real with ourselves and enter into the wilderness with humility and earnestness in our heart, sincerity, sincerity in how we approach this, right? When you build a container like that, right, and you enter into the wild, whether it's for one day and one night, whether it's for three days, I'm gonna go out for three days this week, you know? I have a little trip planned out. And it's not an initiation in the ancient or indigenous sense of the word, you know, where you like you sow your prayer beads for days and days and days and you have initiation elders to guide you. It's a new day and age, okay? There's not many elders out here. There's not many master magicians out here that are ready to help you blast through your ego create union with the divine and then come back in and create a new form, a new paradigm for the next phase of your life so you can actually transform, right? So we have to learn how to do that ourselves again. My friends, I enter nature. You know, I love microdosing a little, a little <laughs> uh, mycelium when I'm out there, right? I have my playlist. I have my sacred songs, you know, the Trevor Hall, the Murray Kyle. You know, this, the, the slow and soft songs of the soul. And I have the intent, you know, of valor and truth. The will to truth. To see the truth. To feel the truth in singularity. And let yourself go deep. But you need to rise up in courage. And guess what, my friends, especially men out there. It's hard to get to the rawest, most tender parts of yourself. Unless you put yourself in the rawest, most tender of situations. When we get out into the wild and we perceive the sacredness of things, we perceive the great one moving through all, right? And we put ourselves, you know, out there, raw, with the elements, you know? That challenge invokes a depth. It makes you dig deep. It makes you find something inside. This is why I envision fast and, and sacred, you know, rites of passage. It's usually a four-day fast, four days, four nights. No food, no water. And they call it crying to God. Crying up to God. Because in that process, when you have no food and no water to rely upon, all you got is spirit. It's all you got left. Right? And you cry out your heart at God's feet. You lay it all down. That's kind of what initiation is like. That's what it's about. It's about finding those rawest chords, the deepest chords of your heart, and letting them sing forth. Letting them sing so loud as a sacred song of your soul pours out. That's just a real talk about initiation, about wilderness, about modern day initiation. My friends, I do ceremony and communion out here in nature. These are the twin buttes right here. Every day, every day I'm out there, you know, whether it's a ceremony for just one hour or for five hours 
or if I get the chance to go out there alone for, you know, some overnights. It's a daily practice communing with the sacred, building a relationship with the sacred so you can, you know, develop that relationship, kindle that power, you know. Faith is your fuel, faith is your armor, and your relationship, your knowing, your familiarity with spirit flowing through all things is what allows your your being, your character, your ego to transform itself because it has conviction in something greater. My friends, the natural feeds on the supernatural in the words of Tao Lore. Okay? The natural feeds on the supernatural. We feed on this unseen longing for our greatness, for the hero inside of us. We f- like our being feeds on that. There's this heroic quality within all of us. Right. The natural feeds on the supernatural. We are feeding on the will of spirit, you know. We are fe- feeding on that higher reality, wanting to realize that here and now. So by creating a relationship with nature, where your body feels that safe and at ease, where the elements communicate to you, where you feel the spirit moving through all things, where you can enter into that space and surrender with a valorous heart and, um- and a humble view of things. Man, we can learn so much, so much when we unlock the doors with that kind of intention and container. And my friends, the master, the master doesn't learn from books. The master learns on the mountaintops. The mountain, the master learns from his own instinct and inner truth, his inner wisdom, his inner knowing. And this is why he becomes a real master. It's because it's instinctual. It is not like mechanical. It's not thought through. It's not programmed. It is coming from the depths of him. It's in alignment with his core, with the source of his being. And that is found, that kind of alignment, that kind of authenticity, that kind of power is found when your heart sheds its, sheds its shield, right? And you sing forth in truth and honesty. And you sing forth in awareness of your communion with the great one out here. My friends, the master learns on the mountaintops. I hope I can encourage you to enter into, into the wilderness and initiate yourself on whatever level seems right for you. My life is communicating to me on all levels right now in relationships and finances and my inner world and things going on and challenges like go into nature now. My dreams are telling me this. You know, at what level is this message deeply resonant for you? Because if it's hitting home, if the bells are ringing, my friends, it's time to get on your big boy shoes or your big girl shoes. It's time to girdle up your courage and make a strong decision for your life, to take a higher view of things. And you know what? If I want to live into my highest potential, I need to do what's hard. I need to go and fucking get out there into the wilderness, you know, however I can for a while alone. It's all where a lot of magic happens. This video is probably especially made for men out there. If you enjoyed this message, hit that like button. If you guys want to talk to me one-on-one, you can apply for a free one-on-one talk. Link in the description for that. And my friends, I really appreciate when you share these videos because like YouTube shadow bans me really hard. So the only way that people really find my channel is when you guys send it to a friend of yours. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, that was just a real talk. Let me know if you like real talks out here in nature. Peace out, my friends.